The New Patriotic Party has described Choi's conclusion on the President Mahama Ford Get Saga as flawed, describing the report as an attempt to whitewash the president and hoodwink Ghanaians. Choi, in its investigations, concluded the president offended the Public Gifts Act but adds the president was not in a conflict of interest situation in receiving the Ford gift. But the NPP says President Mahama's behavior in accepting an expensive vehicle from a government contractor who had met him to solicit for government contracts breaches Article 284 of the 1992 Constitution, and which clearly amounts to a bribe. Meanwhile, former chief investigator of the Commission of Human Rights and Administrative Justice, Kenna Tifwa, says once the commission found President Mahama guilty of breaching the gift policy, it ought to have been braver and courageous in finding him guilty of breaching the conflict of interest law. The internment is to constrain public officers from accepting gifts or placing themselves in a position where their co conduct as public officers might, might be influenced. We will be probing the issue further by speaking with the NPP communication team plus the President's legal team and of course gauge the mood of an independent legal practitioner on this matter. This is today's Big Story. My name is Aisha Bryan. Charles' investigation on the Ford gift to President Mahama inter alia concluded it was inappropriate for President Mahama to receive the Ford vehicle as a gift. However, the President was not guilty of having put himself in the position of receiving a bribe or put himself in a conflict of interest, abuse of office situation. But the NPP is questioning if there was no unwholesome intent behind the President's gift, why did the Burkina Bay contractor seek to deny the gift until confronted with evidence? And why did he seize the reporter's equipment and sought to destroy the recordings? The NPP is also asking how Chiraj decided that the president was not complicit in the decisions by his appointees to award contracts to his friend. Now, the New Patriotic Party says by receiving this expensive gift, President Mahama has violated the Constitution of Ghana. Indeed, it talks about a particular article and it says every other statute guiding the conduct of public officials so they avoid real or the perception of kickbacks has been offended. We'll be doing some analysis. But first, let's listen to the former, uh, the former chief investigator of charge on this matter. I think the moment you found that whole gift policy derives from Article 284 of the Constitution. The intent is to constrain public officers from accepting gifts or placing themselves in a position where their co conduct as public officers might, might be influenced by um, um, the, the personal relationships that develop out of the gift taking and the, I mean, gift giving and gift taking. And so in this case, if the shraj was able to find as a fact that his excellency the president was in breach of the policy intentment i mean the intention behind the policy it ought to have been braver courageous to go to the next step and find that the contact the conduct so found is in infringement of the policy also constitutes an infringement of article 284 of the constitution i have difficulty in seeing that contradiction not being palpably registered on the minds of the decision maker. That was Professor Kenate for a former uh, investigator at the uh, Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice. On the phone line is uh, Mr. Michael Quay Jr. He is a private legal practitioner and an MPP Deputy Director of Communications. Good evening to you, uh, Mr. Michael Quay. Uh, thanks for your time on today's Big Story. Hello. Good evening to you. You are on today's Big Story. 
Yes, uh, hello, good evening to you and to your listeners. Now, well. the, the report on the Ford gift investigation was clear. Part of it read it was inappropriate for President Mahama to accept the gift, but he was not in breach of uh, the Conflict of Interest Act. So what exactly are you pointing at if you say their investigation was flawed? Yes, sir, thank you very much. Um, yes, Charles have given their verdict on the map. But the issue is still subject to various Ghanaian interpretations of what exactly is meant by the issue of inappropriate. So I'm sure you're aware that, for example, the former commissioner of charge, Mr. Emil Short, or his lordship Emil Short, for example, say the conclusion by charge presents a lot of problems because um, it is an issue that would give the wrong signal to all public stakeholders. And the quotation is that the president's code of ethics imposes a complete prohibition on his minister to accept gifts in cash or kind from a commercial enterprise or any other organization. So the question here that a lot of people have asked is how can we ask that? For example, Mr. Kamizoe, we all know, is not a charity. He's not a philanthropist. He gave the gift definitely to some appreciation of something he may have got or even an expectation. What was that appreciation or expectation? That is the concern a lot of people want to know, especially in relation to the fact that if has the story from the renowned journalist Vanasse Azuri says that Mr. Kanazoe, after so many attempts, did not get any contract in Ghana. So he decided to go and salute President John Mahama. And in between, during, before, or after contracts were awarded to this gentleman, he presents a car to the president. The question is, should the president have accepted that gift? And if the president was not supposed to accept that gift, and he did, then we are presented with quite a few problems. Because I am sure every Ghanaian is aware that this same, um, this same rule in terms of the code of ethics which President Mahama himself issued to his ministers and appointees forbids them from accepting gifts of more than $50, which is approximately... 200 dollars. Now, was the car not more than $50? And why did President Mahama accept it? In any case, why was it accepted and duty paid for before President John Mahama supposedly put it in a pool? At which stage the report is not clear on? At which stage it was put in the pool? So, these are all... Hello, Mr. Okwe, you are still on today's big story. Yes. So, this is the problem. All right. Um, so, this is a problem that is presented by the report. There's a very big gap. And if people like Emil Short are confused, then I dare say that the rest of us are even the more so. Right, I'll have you hold for a second because I have Abraham Amaleba who is a member of the NDC legal team. Good evening to you uh, for your time on today's big story. Good evening, good evening to your viewers. Mr. Amaleba, the MPP is describing the uh, Shraj report on the Ford gift saga as flawed. Reason being, yes, Shraj admits that President Mahama has offended the gift act. Acts. But it goes on to say the president did not offend, was not in any conflict of interest or any abuse of office situation. How do we reconcile this? Well, my question to the MPP is when Shiraj and the um, indicated that 
Paul was not in breach of any law, but it was also drug to drug. He did describe it as a whitewash. These are double standards from a group of people who cannot even uh, launch their own manifesto. But the point is this. The Shirag is the institution that is mandated to deal with matters such as this. Shirag has come out with a or a conclusion that on the issue of corruption, the president was not culpable. On the issue of uh, bribery, the president was not culpable. On the issue of fraud, the president was not culpable. But Trump said that he had breached uh, his own code. Now, the question to ask, and I have a difficulty there, the question to ask is, when you look at that code, the code says that a public officer shall not solicit for gifts. Did the president solicit for this gift? No. The same code says that once gift is delivered without the knowledge of the public officer, what you do is to declare it and hand over state. Did the president do what the court said? Yes. Don't forget that the president only discovered that a gift was presented. It's not as if he received a gift. The gift was presented only, he got to know of the presentation of the gift after some time. So the gift was already in the country. But when he discovered it, he simply handed over to him to the state. Where has the president fought it? Has the president used that car to his advantage? As we speak, vehicle is fitted with national security accoutrement. Is it not a state that is benefiting from this? Think that the MPP is doubling in matters that they lack the competence. When they had the opportunity to deal with corruption within the MPP, I'm talking about the Ohino Impose Committee report, they blew away the opportunity. They have no moral right to be talking about it. Uh, they, they also accused the president of breaching Article 284. And indeed, Article 284, uh, Clause 1 reads, A public officer shall not put himself in a position where his personal interest conflicts or is likely to conflict with the performance of the functions of his office. And the, the explanation is that uh, Monsieur Kanazoi was... Uh, having a contract with government and because of that the president did not have any locals to take a gift from such a person because it will render it a bribe first and foremost i indicated to you madam the president did not, did not solicit for that gift secondly the shiraz report was very clear on this matter and indicated that nowhere was the president conflicted. For instance, the contract, the president was not part of those who, who granted the contract. The contract was given by a tender board. The president was not part of it. The president is not part of procurement. But the it's supervised by the minister, and the minister reports to the president. Unless, unless you can show me, and the FC can show me that. There was a directive from the president to the minister, and the minister relayed say to the tender committee or the procurement committee. I would agree with you. But in the absence of that, the president is not conflicted. Mr. Maliba, one, one will say that uh, the minister who is head of this tender board or who supervises these kind of things is an appointee of the president. And indeed, the president reports, uh, the minister reports to the president, I mean, um, occasionally. And so, I mean, there, there's, how do we understand this point that the minister was giving a contract to a contractor, but the president was not aware of it? Let's not import extraneous factors into this. Nowhere did the report say that the president has instructed the minister. And nowhere did it say that the minister was doing something on behalf of the president in the case of 
awarding a contract that the president has directed him to do that. In the report, it was not mentioned. The reason why we're bringing this in is that the, the president explained, or the legal team explained at a point that indeed the president took the vehicle, but at the point at the time he was taking the vehicle, he didn't know there was any such contract between Ghana and that uh, uh, between government and the contractor, and that's why this kind of conversation is coming in. On this point, rather first extending uh, uh, our argument that. Even though the car was delivered, the person was not in the know that the contractor was bidding for a contract. So doesn't this also raise questions that the president doesn't know what he has appointed people to do? I mean, no, 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 he no, should, president, he's supposed to be in the know of no, 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 all no, no, that is happening. The president, that is why he has appointed people to take charge of his, uh, uh, his, his, his responsibilities as the president. The president cannot be at everywhere at the same time and knowing everything at the same time. No, the president received briefings. And if it was not time for the minister to brief the president, I do not think that uh, you would want to fault the president for that. I don't think so. It, it's, not, it's not right. Mr. Amadiba, let me have you hold a second and speak with uh, Mr. Michael Kwe Jr., who is on the other line. Hello, Mr. Okay, I'm told we lost him. Okay, so whilst we try to get him back, let me come back to you, uh, uh, Mr. Maliba. Now, um, the MPP is, is saying that uh, the president needs to be dealt with for this act. And, and if you read the, the uh, Article 284, like I read earlier, it, it states clearly that if the president indeed took a gift Okay, if the president indeed took a gift, I'll come back to you because uh, Mr. Michael Kwe is on the line. Uh, Mr. Michael Kwe, um, Article 284, in which you are asking charge or the court to, to, to look at because you think the president has breached, reads, a public officer shall not put himself in a position where his personal interests conflicts or is likely to conflict with the performance of the functions of his office and the president indeed explained that yes he took the the ford uh, all right but he he donated the ford to the state and even at the time he was taking the ford he didn't know there was a contract between government and monsieur kanazoi i mean that should settle it right <laughs> that cannot settle it because the issue is that one was the gift more than $50. The president has own code of ethics, so he must know what is in there. Two, he knows Mr. Kantazoi is a commercial enterprise, unlike, for example, the president of Libya, who is a state. So why did he accept the gift from a commercial enterprise? Because this is a conflict of interest situation. Now, the president told us through the BBC that he's not involved when it comes to procurement. And yet, when the letter from West Blue came from the office of the president in the West Blue contract, the president specifically gave not only a decision, also a direction that there should be sole sourcing for West Blue to win the contract. So the president, contrary to what he told the BBC, has shown that he's directly involved in the awarding of contracts. So the question again, why did he accept the gift? Because the rule is clear. It says that he must reject the gift. And yet he accepted it. And that is why he has violated the uh, rule when it comes to uh, the code of ethics for public officers. And that is unacceptable. That is what would lead people to aware that then he was aware and therefore it was a bribe. This is the problem we are faced with. And until they can answer why a gift of more than $50 was accepted contrary to the code of ethics, then it is inexplicable and unacceptable. Okay, let me speak with uh, Ms. Amaliba. Ms. Amaliba, um, the MPP is accusing the president of um, abusing power. And the reasons, once again, is the fact that, one, 
the contractor, when all these issues were coming up, sought to destroy the recording that was made by the journalist. Indeed, the suspect foul play, if he knew there was nothing wrong with this gift, why would he do that? Again, nobody knew of this gift until this report came out. Then the president decided to talk about it, that I have given the, I've taken the gift all right, but I gave it out to the state. He, he, could, have, he could have done that earlier before the report came in. Don't you think so? How can you attribute the conduct of the contractor to that of the president? If the contractor sought to destroy anything, how can you hold the president culpable for that? How can you transfer the same of the contractor to the president? What logic is that? What principle is that? My colleague on the other side talks about the code of conduct. If he doesn't know, the same code says that if a public official discovers that a gift has been presented, you declare the gift and hand it over to the state. Am I still online? Hello? Yes, you are still on air. You are on today's yes. big story. I'm hearing some noise as if have my, my phone is off. Now, did the president do exactly that? This is not a gift where the president had knowledge of. This is not a gift that the president solicited for. This is a gift that arrived in Ghana for some time before the president, the president's attention was drawn to it. And don't forget that it was only when the president went to the Upper East and he was campaigning in the last election that the regional minister drew his attention to it. Now, the quote, and I'm going back to the quote, and I don't like the way they choose and pick which one suits them. The same quote says that in, in such circumstances, which circumstances? Circumstances where the gift has been presented with your knowledge, what you do is to declare the gift and hand it and hand over same to the state. Did the president do that or not? The answer is the affirmative. You see, the MPP are classing on to straw. This will not win them votes. They should better go and launch their manifesto for Ghanaians to see what is inside. The MPP had opportunity to deal with corruption within their party. The, I'm talking about the Nana Ohinin Souls Committee support. They blew that chance away. That led to the removal of uh, Afoko. So they have no moral right to talk about it. Let Ghanaians speak about it. If and, uh, we put the MPP aside, uh, former, a former investigator, chief investigator of, uh, from charge, I'm talking about Professor Kenatefwa, he's also admitted the fact that the president has breached Article 284. You see, don't let us behave as if we don't know the camps from which people emanate from. Ken Atefua is a die in the wool of the MPP. He is doing the work of the MPP. What he is talking about is just in federal of the MPP's own agenda. There, are you saying that the shrug that exonerated President Kufuor is different from the shrug of today? Is that not the same institution? When shrug exonerated President Kufuor did the MPP say it was a whitewash? These are the double standards that you need to expose. Shiraz has done its work. It has come to the conclusion that all the things they're talking about, corruption, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, bribery, abuse of power, or is this a conflict of interest, all these things did not manifest. And I think that once the institution responsible for dealing with this matter have spoken. We should let the matter die and we go on. Let's respect our institutions. Let's not let people who are surrogates come to throw dust into our eyes.
Well, many thanks to Mr. Abraham Amaleba, is a private legal practitioner and a member of the NDC legal team. Uh, Mr. Michael Kwe, if you're on the other line, I'll ask you this final question. Uh, after listening to the explanation given by Ms. Abraham Amaleba, you still think that the MPP has a, has a case? Well, I'm told he's, he's not on the line. He lost uh, Mr. Michael Kwe. That will be all for today's big story. We've been talking to two legal practitioners, one for the NPP camp and one from the NDC camp. And we'll be discussing a report by charge on the Ford Gift Saga, uh, uh, President Mohammed's Ford Gift Saga. Um, the issue is that the NDC says M President Mahama has breached no law, and that's against uh, the NPP's assertion that President Mahama has breached Article 284 of the 1992 Constitution. Many thanks for watching. Good evening.